Welcome folks to lecture 5. Lecture 5 is a very exciting and important lecture as well and the title of today's lecture is the frequency response of amplifiers. Basically the amplifier response depends on the frequency content of the input signal. And in order for us to understand how the amplifier behaves, we have to review some basic concepts first. In order for us to understand the frequency response of amplifiers, we must understand the behavior of the single time constant RC circuit. The circuit is shown here. We have a voltage source connected to a resistor, which is connected to a capacitor as shown. This is very fundamental circuit. You should have mastered it in early courses. If not, this is your last chance. Make sure you pay attention and make sure you understand it. We will use this circuit to design amplifiers in CMOS technology. You see, we are talking about state-of-the-art analog IC design. What we're going to look at is we are looking at the frequency response in CMOS circuits based on single time constant RC circuit. We will have an understanding for the analog CMOS circuits based on our understanding of the RC circuit. This is great. This simple circuit advances the technology. Let's look at it in more details. So one of the things we will notice is that the voltage source VI and the resistor R are basically the Thevenin equivalent circuit at the input stage. So if you have an amplifier, the amplifier has an input stage. This input stage can be a previous amplifier or a previous module or it can be the input signal coming in from the antenna in the case of a wireless circuit for example. So the input stage can be either input signal or it can be the output of the previous stage in your system or in your circuit. By any mean, we can use Thevenin theorem to simplify that input stage into a voltage source and an input resistance. Also, the capacitor C is basically the parasitic capacitance of the transistor, the layout, and so on. So basically what we're saying is this capacitance can be created by the equivalent capacitance of the transistor at the input or the equivalent capacitance of the output of the previous stage or the interconnect, which means the wires that connect the previous stage to this stage. Now we can say that the output voltage V out can be evaluated using the voltage divider. Right, Because you have two impedances in series connected to VI, then VOUT is nothing but the voltage divider. So we can say that VOUT will equal to the output impedance over the sum of these two impedances times the input voltage. This is a basic voltage divider concept, so it will be VOUT of S will equal to 1 over SC over R plus 1 over SC times VI of S. Over here we are using the impedance of the capacitor to be 1 over SC, so we are using the S domain, right? Frequency domain and S domain are kind of related. Now, by multiplying SC on the top and the bottom, we can see that V out of S will equal to 1 over 1 plus S times RC times VI, and if I take the output over the input ratio, which is V out of S over V I of S, this is basically the gain of the circuit A of S, and that is will equal to 1 over 1 plus S R C. And that is very exciting. So now what you do is you say that we know what's the gain of this particular circuit in the frequency domain. It's nothing but a voltage divider. We calculated it. We can convert this circuit from the S domain to the omega domain basically by replacing S with J omega. Remember that if we say S will equal to J omega, then we transform the circuit from the S domain to the frequency domain. Basically, the S domain is the general case that is used to solve for the circuit using the differential equations. The S domain is the easiest way to do it, while the phasor domain or the frequency domain is applied to a pure sinusoidal signal. So you can move from a general case, which is the S domain, to a pure sinusoidal signal, basically by replacing S equals to J omega. That's all what we did. 
by replacing s equals to j omega you transform the circuit from the general case which is the Laplace domain case to the phasor domain or the frequency domain where we are using the pure sinusoidal signal that's all what's into it really so now what we do we say that a of j omega replace s with j omega will equal to 1 over 1 plus j omega rc whatever you have s just replace it with j omega but this is a complex function. What do you mean by a complex function? It uses complex value or complex variable kind of function. Then it has a magnitude and a phase, right? So the magnitude of the gain is basically the absolute value of A of J omega. This will equal to the magnitude of the top, which is 1, over the magnitude of the bottom, which is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So this will be the square root of 1 plus omega RC quantity squared. If we plot the magnitude as a function of frequencies, for this particular function, it's very interesting. You will have a flat response that what we call is the DC response, because when omega equal to 0, you have a gain of 1, which in dB is 0 dB, actually, so it's 0 dB. And then, as the frequency increase, you start to see that the denominator term become more dominating. That means the gain start to drop. So if we will look at the response in dB, it will fairly be flat until we hit the corner frequency, which is the 1 over RC value. So when omega equal to 1 over RC, we start to see a sharp drop. And that's what you see here, is we have a flat line that represents the DC gain until we hit the 1 over RC frequency, and then the gain will start to drop linearly in dB. Right, So this is something we know from previous courses, and the corner frequency is very important to us. It's a function of R and C. Remember that. So basically what this circuit says is that the voltage at the capacitor or the voltage at the output of the circuit is flat until I hit the corner frequency, then will start to rapidly drop. The signal will die at the output if it has a high frequency content. That's all what we're saying here. Of course, you can also do the phase of the circuit, so the phase of the gain or the output voltage is basically the phase of the top, which is zero because this is a real value, minus the phase of the bottom, and the phase of the bottom can be evaluated to be the tangent inverse of the imaginary part, which is omega RC, over the real part, which is one, so you will have minus the tangent inverse of omega RC. If you plot this function, what you will have is roughly zero degrees until a decade before that corner frequency. A decade before omega RC, then you start to see the phase will drop linearly almost until a decade after that corner frequency, which is 1 over omega RC. What's interesting is that the phase of the output voltage or the gain at the corner frequency is minus 45 degrees and the phase at very very high frequency is minus 90 degrees so this plot here represents the phase of the transfer function so basically it's not only the signal will drop as the frequency increase but also the phase will shift toward 90 degrees as the frequency increase